Salute omnes, this is I'm Emilia, also known as the Martian Geek, and welcome back to another episode of New Super Mario Bros. Wii. In the last episode, we beat the boss of World 1, whom I should correct myself on, that was Larry, not Lemmy. I said it was Lemmy, but I didn't realize I was wrong until afterward. So, whoops. I get those two mixed up a lot, it seems like, at least in the modern games. And on that note, this is actually the first Super Mario Bros. game that had the Koopaling since Super Mario World. They were in Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, but other than that, absolutely nothing between 1991 and 2009. So yeah, kind of neat that they brought him back. And of course, then they reused him again for the other two games. But anyway, we're on World 2, and we have a choice of pathway right off, but again, why not both? So let's start into 2-1, or start, start with 2-1, whatever. So the gimmick of this one is these sand spouts. They act like platforms, but only for a limited time. The notable thing about World 2 is it seems like a pretty significant step up in difficulty from World 1. It's not super hard, but... It'll definitely challenge you more, and I almost jumped down the pit. So there's our first star coin. You ever think about the fact that deserts are almost always World 2 in these games, when deserts are actually one of the more threatening environments in real life? Whoops. Well, there goes my power up. I guess it's because the things that make deserts threatening in real life don't really translate to video games. Like, at something like the Sahara, that's dangerous because there's no water, which doesn't really matter for Mario because, at least when we're playing as him, he doesn't actually have to drink anything. And they're very hot. Which only really, dang it, only really matters in the Angry Sun level. Well, at least we can get one power up back. Oh yeah, and Boomerang Bros are back, I guess I didn't mention that. It is kind of bizarre that they introduced the Boomerang Throwing version before the Hammer Throwing, or after the Hammer Throwing version in this game. Like in Super Mario Bros. 3, it made sense to have the Boomerang Bros earlier, because they're an easier to deal with enemy. But anyway, moving on. We continue to develop the theme. Uh-oh, I almost jumped onto that at the wrong time. So this third star coin is actually pretty tricky to get. It would be okay if we had a, heli a helicopter suit, but we don't. Dang it. What you're supposed to do is throw a Koopa shell at it. And that particular Koopa is kind of hard to jump on in a way that you can actually get the shell from it, because there are bottomless pits below it. And sound spouts, but... You know, those are on a timer. You have to get the second one over again, too, and wait for the sand to come back up. Is there a Koopa over here that I can get? Definitely should have waited for that. Okay, you got the shell. And I missed. Well, let's see, are there any... And almost jumped on the pit again. I can get a Koopa from later. Uh, no, there is no later in the level. Okay. Yeah, I hate this star coin. It's just so hard to get, to get the shell down there at the at the right time. Also, I think I need to set this. Dang it! I guess you can't set down shells in this game either. Yeah, yeah, running low on time. Whatever. Because of the stupid star coin. Uh oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, watch Maybe most of my deaths in this game be just from trying to get star coins and secret exit paths. Anyway, third time's the charm? One of these days I need to be quicker and uh, quick enough to do that in one cycle. But, whatever. I did it again! You know what they say the definition of insanity is. Uh, well, I got the star coin. But what shall it profit a man if he gains all the star coins but loses a life? Yeah, I wasn't gonna try for that. It's not that difficult of a stage. Also, I think I'm actually gonna save the second power up just in case I make another stupid mistake and get hit again. That and having a fire flower could actually be a liability here because I could accidentally shoot the Koopa and I don't want that, now do I? Okay, so I have the shell. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that one is annoying to say the least. But we're done with the level anyway, it's really just that one part that I had trouble with. Mario time. You can see what I mean about the difficulty increase, though. So now we can go directly to the fortress, but why would we do that when we have 2-2? Two, two? Well, I guess I'm only down one life from when I started the world. So, here's this level's gimmick. Barrels. We can pick them up and we can throw them. So, if, you'd have, if you've ever wanted to channel your inner Donkey Kong, here we go. But we also have spikes, and they're throwing things at us, so... Be wary of that. Why are there palm trees here? I mean, I guess they're kind of associated with deserts. But we have a beach world. Peace switch. And another useless one. I keep waiting for one of these to actually lead to something besides just coins, but... Well, I only have the ice flower anyway. You can't... Never mind. Hmm, that was an awkwardly placed spike. You know what? We're just gonna ignore him. Let him do his thing. Get rid of these spinies for us. Watch as the thing actually interacts with slopes correctly. And now, welcome to the Deadly Elevator of Koopas. Jump rope! Is there something down here? You know what, I'm getting the halfway point first. But that looks suspicious. And also cut off there. Aha! My instincts were correct. And now I have to get all three coin star coins after the halfway point. That's a bit unfortunate. Wait, is that it? Okay. Just have to get to the bottom. Yeah, you guys have fun. I'm leaving. Yeah, 
you can tell that it's been just long enough since I've played this game that I don't remember where everything is. How do you like it? special about this area, or is it just a random barrel? Ah, fine. A tip, don't try to ground pound the vine blocks because then it'll grow down and you don't want that. But anyway, we basically have the modern version of the uh, cloud bonus rooms from the original Super Mario Brothers. Just gotta make sure to time this right. Two down, one to go. And I think I know where the third one is. Yeah, that pipe down there, we can't go in there, because that requires a mini mushroom, which obviously we don't have. And for that matter, I haven't seen one show up yet. Mario time! I was trying to remember if this game did the you need a power up for this that isn't provided in the stage thing, and I guess it does. That's confirmation. That's unfortunate. Fire flower thing this time, huh? Alright. Anything up there? Hmm. And we're underground again. But this time, with sand and darkness. And this music again. This has to be the most overused track in the history of video game music. If it isn't, I don't know what is. We have Venus fire traps now, and they're helping to light up the area a bit. And our own fireballs can do that, too. So now you have a dilemma of, do you kill the Venus fire traps? We're gonna go invincible, because that lights up the whole room! I probably wasted that. So sparkly. I don't suppose they put something down that pipe too. Or either of these? I mean, once you're used to the gimmick, this one isn't really that special. It does bring back fire snakes. Which also light up the place. Sneaky. What? Fire snakes also have gained the ability to grow big heads. The huge head potion. Or tonic, or whatever. I mean, it gives you a lot of lives, but no star coin. That's a cute little bonus room, I suppose, for people who notice it. 
A light in the darkness. Wasn't there a level in Yoshi's Island DS called that? Again, it brings back this type of platform, too. Just like the Super Mario Bros. 3 ones. And another mini moon. I'm not sure how to play. I'm sparkly! I am no longer sparkly. Sadness. Wait, that was the first one? What's with all these mini mushroom passages? I haven't seen a mini mushroom in the game yet. Okay, I guess that's one notable feature at this level. It's longer than I expected. You know, I'm going to save that. I already have a fire flower, so... Might as well have it just in case. Hmm. Is the camera scrolling there? I don't think there's anything down there, but... I shall just move on. Ah, oh, we have Fire Brothers, too. Ow. Easy second, Starcorn. Just keeping an eye out for the third one. Hello, giant Venus fire traps. I think they're technically called lava piranhas now, or fire piranha plants, or something like that. Can I get up there? That fireball is right in the way. I don't think there's anything up there. Yeah. It looks like there should be something down there, but I don't think there is. Up here, on the other hand... Well, I suppose that was at least a little bit interesting take on the typical underground level. And hey, look, it's a Super Mario Bros. 1-style flagpole platform thing. <laughs> Stairway, whatever you call it. We're halfway to maxing out our lives, too. Yeah. And conveniently enough, the halfway point of World 2 is a fortress just like World 1. Not all of these episodes will be exactly half a world. As the game gets more difficult, I suspect the levels will take more time, and I'll probably end up splitting some of them into three. But for now... Sandy Tower. With doors. And more... motion-controlled things. We did it, we got some coins. And absolutely nothing else. Oh, are giving us a nice flower anyway. I could get those coins, but I don't need them that badly. Yeah, this is how we're hiding stuff now. Now, if I was to provide a mini mushroom, I could go back and get the third star coin too, too. Not that I like using the mini mushroom, but... Even the person who did New Super Mario Bros. DS admitted that the thing is a pain to use. And decide levels based around actually using it for good, rather than just... being annoying. Also, suddenly, magic. Okay, why haven't we gotten a star coin yet? I'm 
going to go this way because it looks less final. There we go. Okay. That's about what I thought. Ow, what is shooting that magic? There are no magic hoopas in this game. I think this is the one where I remember getting a helicopter suit and just, like, flying through it. Kinda interesting how the flying power-up in Super Mario World makes horizontal levels a lot easier, and the one in this game makes... Well, that sucked. Makes vertical levels easier. Hope I didn't need that power for anything else. Can't have it, I guess. I needed that. I've been hanging around Gamma V too long. Red coin ring. Well, I do need the power up, but it would have been nice if it were more than just a mushroom. Oh, I guess I. I guess I don't get a mushroom. I guess it does go directly to second tier. Or... No, I'm thinking of Yoshi. Never mind. The red coin rings, I would assume. Um, each one has a certain power up that it will give you. I know what I'm talking about, I swear. I could go get that last coin, but. Danger. Also, ow. That could have been bad. Well, we won't be fighting Roy with the power up, but at least we have an extra hit. Hello, Roy. Yes, yes, roar to you too. Basically, he's Larry, but big, and he can stun you. You jump on him, and then you jump over him. And then you jump on him, and then you jump over him, and then you jump on him. You know, Yoshi's Island came out in 1995, and it had more complex bosses and... Well, okay, this game's so far, but I guess things will get a little better later. But the thing about Yoshi's Island is the bosses had different ways of defeating them. Like, shoot one with an egg, ricochet an egg off a wall with another one, ground pound another one. It was more than just jump on it three times, you know? But I digress. We're halfway through World 2, so this is where I'm going to call it. Oh, look, Toad Rescue Mission. You know what? I don't really care about that, but I guess we can do it next time. We'll save our game, and I'll see you next time.